Jessica Henry Gray, and I'm excited to have you back with me today. Today, I'm going to show you just a nuts and bolts video on this live Friday. We're not really live. I'm just filming this video separately. Um, I just have a lot going on this coming the rest of this week. So I thought, you know, let's, I get this question a lot about uh, what to pack for plein air and we're coming up into plein air season and people are taking workshops and they're traveling all over. So this is a great opportunity to just uh, talk to you about it. So uh, on that note, I do have some workshops coming up and there are spaces still available. We've still got some spots in France and I will be in Ireland this summer um, in June, last two weeks of June. Um, and I will be in Florida as well as Oregon later this year. So check those out. I'm excited to share those with you as well as the ones I already have on my website. Okay, so let's jump into this video and I will show you what to pack and to bring with you. I want to share with you um, a question I've been getting a lot of lately. We're gearing up to it for our plein air season and so a lot of the questions that I'm getting are on materials. So in light of the questions on materials and as far as packing and um, what you can bring with on an airplane and all that, I thought I would cover that today. Now I will in the future do a video on like actually packing for a carry-on, but I didn't think I would add that in today's video since we're just going to talk about plein air painting um, and what to pack for that. So I'm going to give you an in-depth look into my backpack. Now this can be for, you know, just your brief one hour plein air session or for a longer session or for like a whole weekend. Um, but it's going to be the same, more or less, uh, what you'd want to, uh, to pack for a plein air session. All right. Now I've run the gamut of uh, plein air backpacks. I've got all sorts of different kinds that I've tried throughout the years and I keep coming back to my standard, the same one that you've seen me use for about six years. Okay. This. Sienna. I mean, look how big this thing is. You can see um, it's absolutely massive. It expands to big and it starts out lightweight, which is um, it's a big deal to me because I tried an army type backpack that I got for like $35 and it was super, super durable, but it was extremely heavy. So, you know, every ounce matters when you're trekking through the woods and um, yeah. So I keep coming back to this. I only had to repair um, the hand. There was a handle here that did eventually rip off and that's fine. There's still another handle, which I still use. Um, and I did have to repair it um, once and I got some outdoor upholstery thread to repair it. And it's still good as new. Um, not a big deal. I'm super hard on these backpacks and I think I paid like 65 for this one. Um, okay, so this is my plein air backpack. Been through the ringer. So I'm gonna start from the outside and work my way in. Now on the outside, I put things that I'm gonna have to have right away. So if there's an emergency, this is where I keep um, things that I pretty much just leave in here all the time. My first aid kit, um, business cards, bug spray. Um, if I'm gonna fly, I don't bring the bug spray. Some things depends on where you're going. You can just pick up when you get there. And so I don't worry about that. For example, if I'm gonna fly somewhere, I never bring paper towels. They're bulky and I'm not gonna pack them in my backpack or my suitcase. Pick up paper towels, you can get them anywhere in the world. Um, so here's my bug spray since I'm just out in the woods. Of course, it's early spring, so I'm not worried about bugs, but I thought I'd throw it in here just to show you. Um, if I'm traveling somewhere and I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of carrying, walking, if I'm teaching a workshop, I do carry some like roll-on joint pain, whatever. You don't have to get it, but to me, it's helpful. Um, handy wipes. When I'm done painting for a session, I get in the car, it's just, they feel grimy. Um, I keep a pack of wet ones. Um, I keep a, a Ziploc baggie of just some of those little clips. These are super handy to have on hand. Post-it note, a nail file, um, glasses cleaners, a pen, you know, just some quick grab emergency stuff. And a pair of backup glasses. If you have to wear glasses, um, my daughter lost a pair of glasses in the ocean. <laughs> 
And when you don't have a, pair, a backup pair, I can't even tell you how annoying that is. So I just throw in a pair. Uh, they're scratched, they're horrible, but they're in here. So in the event of, you know. Um, little pack of Kleenex. Um, roll of tape, super handy to have on hand. And I did have part of this as part of my demo. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, now this is my uh, first aid kit. So in here, in, in the event of, you know, something happens, you have to run to the hospital. I have an emergency mask. They give you those at the door anyway, but um, band-aids, gauze, um, Q-tips. I have a little thing of aspirin. Um, this little tin has safety pins and some um, alcohol pads. That's pretty much it. This is a lidocaine pad just because I had some extras from back pain, whatever. <laughs> so I just threw it in there. You can make it your own. Sometimes just a band-aid and some wipes is all you need. Um, I had an emergency poncho. Suit yourself. Okay, so that's it for the front pat pouch. I'll put all that in later. Okay, and then the side um, chapstick. It is amazing how chapped your lips get out here in the wind. And then this side, um, if you want earbuds, I personally like the sound of nature. Uh, I have a battery pack in case, um, you know, whatever. You don't want your phone to die when you're out in the wilderness or downtown or wherever you are you, if you need to get a hold of someone. It's important to have that access. Um, I like to always carry a pocket knife, uh, these, these handy big ones clipped to your outside. Um, you know, you can't always carry specific protection, but this is actually pretty handy for opening tubes. Um, and if I'm gonna check a suitcase to travel, I will throw one of these in my suitcase. I accidentally forgot to put this in my check-on suitcase at an airport and it was in my carry-on. They do take it away, so. <clears throat> Obviously, there's a big knife on here too. So anyway, there's that. Um, now, these little dog bags, clip on your dog collar. Uh, these make great garbage bags and they're small and the little backup bags you get with them, in here somewhere, <laughs> they're small and I mean, you get a lot of garbage bags on here. And for about one session, that's all you need. One of these little bags is about all you need for your paper towel garbage, perfect. Um, you just clip it to your easel or one of the tripod things, whatever. And then it's not, you know, waving and fluttering in the breeze. So I really like that. Um, now, I got my sunblock. Gotta have sunblock. Don't forget your ear tips and the back of your neck if you're wearing a hat like this. Um, I do recommend a big visor. Um, and, and a note on hats. Make sure that under here is a neutral color. Um, don't go with a bright color because it's going to affect your color judgment um, when you're painting. So a nice neutral color and then, um, that's fine. Now one other thing I'm doing for a safety measure while I'm out and about, a lot of times I'm alone. I have these rear view, rear, <laughs> rear view mirrors. That's a tough one to say. Um, I'm going to clip to uh, little clips and clip them to my mirror. Um, I'm going to clip them to my uh, plenary easel so that I can kind of see if anyone is approaching me from behind. I have a dog and even if I did I can't take a dog with me or a knife or a gun or whatever and you know so mirrors help I guess. So there's that. Getting into the big pouch. So I, am, I prefer, I've been around the block on the umbrella situation with plein air easels. Um, I have the silver and black one where it's, you know, either black or silver on the outside and you got the silver on the inside. Those are too dark for me. They cast too heavy of a shadow. Um, and especially for filming, I don't like them because the palette is in too much of a shadow. So some people really like them and they just swear by the dark silver ones. I think it, the value is too dark and it's gonna alter your judgment of your values for your painting. I prefer the white ones. Um, the white is a lighter shade and you can even see, I'm still shadowy, but not too heavy in shadow. So it's not gonna affect my judgment when mixing color. Um, and I do prefer bounty paper towels, but again, if you're gonna travel, um, just pick these up when you get to where you're going. And I've been to places and they don't sell Viva or Bounty. <laughs> you have to go with whatever you can. In that case, choose the most expensive option for paper towels or get rags. You can bring rags if you want. 
Um, now this is something I'm trying that's new. Um, I haven't bought this. I've just heard good things about it. It's the Palette Garage. Um, you've seen me use my pill sorter before. The only thing I don't like about my pill sorter with the Velcro tabs underneath is that I, I'm used to going fast to my paint piles and I don't like that I have to reach in and scoop out. And, and I, I, can't, I like going this way. And so this Palette Garage <clears throat> is more like that. It has a it's like an L-shaped feature, and you just put your paint on the on the plastic. Um, well, well, you'll see when I get it set up. And so, I don't know. We'll try this out. So that's new. Um, I have my brushes, and even when I travel, I kind of take just the bare bones. Uh, I might take a few more extras, two, four, six, eight, and maybe a couple of each of those if I really like. Of um, like a couple twos, a couple sixes. A um, couple fours. Those are the, the main ones that I use all the time. Um, I have a few small ones. I have a few nice chiseled, um, angled, sharp ones. I like those. A palette knife. I like the shape of a triangle. You can kind of see that. I like that one. A um, couple tiny detail ones, brushes. Uh, a 4B pencil. And that makes up my brush container. And I like this size container is, as opposed to a roll-up because it doesn't take up very much space in there. Um, that's, that to me is a better situation. So, and then as far as uh, getting a plastic paint box or fishing tackle box, again, that's going to have a lot of air and, and weight and bulk. And I like everything to be scrunched and as small as I can get it in my backpack. So this is my container for my paints. And I'll show you all of this when I get things set up. But this is it for the paints. Um, and then of course my tripod, which I'll set this all up. And my easel, the open box M. This is the nine by 12. And I've, um, I have several of these. Um, I have an eight by 10 that you've saw me, uh, I've used for years. And um, I like the nine by 12, it's a little bit bigger, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's fun and um, I can get a little larger canvas on it, which is nicer for videos. These also come from Openbox M. This hooks to the side of the easel box for to hold brushes. This is sort of a cup holder. Um, you can use it to hold other things, your, um, you know, Gamsol or some other liquid container. If you're painting with watercolors or water soluble oils, it puts your water in here, whatever. I always bring a bungee cord for the paper towels down below. Um, some people use little chains or whatever, whatever works for you. Some people just hold their paper towels. I like to have both hands free. Uh, this is the remaining attachments for the umbrella. Okay, now let's get it all set up. In a minute, I'm gonna talk about canvas panels, traveling with panels, how to paint on, uh, if you're gonna travel, how to paint many, many different paintings and travel with them wet, how to dry them in your hotel room and things like that. So stay tuned and I'll talk about that in just a minute. All right, so I know from setting up my tripod many times that if I extend both the bottom legs and the third one, just a hands width, that that's just about all I need. One, two, Now, with setting up this uh, open box M, I always make sure to slide this little plate forward all the way back. Tighten these down. And that just makes it a little bit more stable.
this is new to me, so let's check this out. And no, they're not sponsoring me to do this either. <laughs> So the, this tube, it comes with this tube and it has this little felt circle thing at the end and you put clove oil, just a dot of clove oil in that and it's supposed to keep the paint from drying out and then you throw the whole thing in the freezer. So, okay man, whatever you say. So we're gonna these are just instructions on how to take care of it. Store it horizontally. Keep half inch free of paint on each end so, so don't fill it all the way up. Okay, well, we're good to go. Okay, so they give you also this, and I, I, I laminated this just to keep it nice. The rule of thirds, this is kind of a nifty little, um, you know, when you're out planner painting, your value scale, just to have this handy which I thought was pretty cool. That was nice of them. So I'll keep that in my plein air stuff. So we've got this going like this, and I suppose, and they give us these clamps. I suppose these are gonna go on. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like this. Oh, I can't. I don't really see how this is. Gonna work. Hmm. I might have to revisit this idea. I think of something. Maybe bigger clamps. I'll explore that. But for now, I'm not gonna use it today. Okay, so I've got my umbrella clamp just on a tripod leg. And I'm gonna tighten this down. What I wanna to talk to you about is your painting panels and traveling with your um, paints. So there, I will have a link below of a PDF file you can get that says, um, what, how to fly with your artist pigments. And you can actually carry them on with you. Um, and four ounces or less of your damsel is actually allowed on board. Okay, so now I still wanna to talk to you about uh, flying with your paints. Uh, there is, I will have a link below of the flying, the, the little document that says that they are artist pigments and what their flash point is and that they are okay to fly with you are acceptable to fly with them on board. You can carry them on with you. I have done that all over the world and never had a problem anywhere at any airport. Um, just make sure that you follow all the guidelines about putting them in separate bags, um, you know, four or five per bag and so forth. So uh, I, of course I work with a limited palette and that is to my advantage too. So <laughs> another reason why to work with a limited palette. Um, and then uh, uh, if you're worried about flying with Gamsol, odorless mineral spirits, uh, you are welcome to call Gamblin Products and they uh, will explain to you the flashpoint and it is now acceptable to fly with Gamsol on board, um, four ounces or less, of course, because it's a liquid. So check with that if you're worried about it and um, that is uh, what I'm gonna say about that. So let's talk about painting surfaces. Now, uh, I would encourage you to <laughs> when I start talking about this, stop the video and back it up and watch it again if it doesn't make sense the first time because this is really, really important and I guarantee it, you're gonna really appreciate this bit of advice because people ask all the time, how do you travel with wet paintings and how do you travel with, I mean, if you wanna paint a whole bunch of paintings, how do you do that when you're traveling? So here's how you do it. This is what's worked for me, okay? Let's say you're gonna just decide, like if you're gonna travel to overseas, France, whatever. Let's say you're gonna travel um, and you're gonna be gone for a long time. 
I'm gonna say, let's just say we're gonna paint eight by tens the whole time because it's gonna make life easier and a lot less complicated. This is the Raymar um, wet panel carrier box. I have had this box um, seven years and it's still no wear and tear other than my paint getting all over it. It's amazing how these last forever. Um, so this is the eight by 10 box and there are little grooves inside. There's three slots and in each of these slots you can fit six all together. So you can fit six all together in this box. So two per, uh, per slot. Okay. Now these are just cheap cotton panels, but I have them in here to illustrate a point. So what I suggest, and I like to paint on eighth inch masonite when I'm traveling. So let's imagine that this was a demo. <laughs> let's imagine this is an eighth inch masonite panel and I have six of them. Okay. The first paintings I'm going to do on my trip are going to be on my linen eighth inch masonite panel. Okay. All six of those are done. Boom, 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 in my hotel room. All right, now the next six I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my panel, flip it over, and I'm gonna take a pre-cut piece of linen. Okay, you have to buy linen or cotton, whatever you like to paint on, in a sheet, in a roll. Cut it to eight by 10 sheets. You're gonna bring your roll of tape. Okay, now on the back side of your dry painting, you're gonna tape this piece of linen down all the way around the edge and be careful so that when you do finish this painting, you don't see the white gap from your tape. You can just do a little bit on each of the corner or whatever. I've done a little strip all the way around the edge, However, whatever works for you. Remember, if you frame it, you're gonna hide a quarter of an inch all the way around the edge anyway. Okay, so now you do your painting on this sheet, get back to your room, peel this off, set it aside, do another one, and you can keep doing these and they will dry and you can stack these. And if you're not, wor if you're worried about them not drying, you can put a sheet of parchment paper in between. And also um, you can bring a, like a drying medium, like a liquid dries pretty quickly. Neo McGill dries pretty quickly. Um, and I do, I have traveled with those and those are one of the reasons why I do travel with those because they will dry almost overnight. And so when I'm in my hotel room and I want to paint a bunch while I'm somewhere wonderful, this is what I'll do. So all six of these are in my box, but then I've got a stack of wet ones. It's like these that by the time I'm packing up my suitcase and I've got 25 paintings like this, when I get back home to my studio, I can sift through these and decide what I like and what I don't like. And then I take neutral pH adhesive glue. You have to use this kind of glue. And on your painting that you like, of, that's on the sheets, brush it carefully into every fiber and glue it down to a fresh uh, piece of masonite roller 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 press it down carefully and then stack it between some books and by morning it should be dry okay uh, be careful that you cut it a little bit bigger than eight by ten because there will be some shrinkage a teeny bit but just a little bit okay so if you needed to have backed it up that's what all i had to say <laughs> so that is how you can get a lot of paintings packed and uh for your trip Okay, so I'm gonna do that when I go to Ireland and France this summer um, and come back with like 175 paintings. Just kidding, not that many. So now talking about the paints and things that uh, you should, or what I bring, what works for me, uh, this is what I have. So I always bring a little container for my oils or gels or whatever it is that I wanna bring. Um, I, I just set it right here on the side of my palette. There's sort of an extension right over here. Um, and then I have, uh, I do like a Galka gel and I can only bring this if I'm going to check my suitcase uh, because 150 milliliters is too large for a carry-on bag for air travel. So they make these in smaller containers. So if you're going to um, just only carry on, um, get a smaller one of these if you want or a liquid, or whatever. Um, so there's that. Um, this is refined linseed oil and I do like this for just basic cleaning my brush or um, if you want a little bit of Gamsol, that's what I have in this container off to the side over here. Uh, outdoors, I don't mind using it outside. 
okay, so, and then this is the air travel. It says artist pigment enclosed. They don't like them being called paint. Kind of sets off red flags. Uh, so it just tells them what the flash point is, 140 degrees or below. Um, flash point is at 100, 450. They are not hazardous. And then my phone number and, um, you know, contact this traveler if you're concerned, but they're not, they're, you know, not flammable liquids. So keep this, and I just put it in this plastic bag. You can laminate it or whatever. Keep it in your bag of paints. Um, even if you're gonna check it in your suitcase, I would still leave it in there. Um, okay, so my regular paints that I normally bring with, and when I'm traveling, I mean, unless you wanna try to find an art store, and uh, you might wanna just bring bigger tubes if you're gonna check your suitcase. Otherwise, you can't bring tubes this big again, 150 milliliter. But I'm up today. I'm in a plein air, so this is the size that you can bring. 37 milliliters. You can just bring these on board the plane with you. Uh, so I, I try to bring some extra colors when I'm traveling because you don't know what colors you're gonna want and how you might get inspired. But today I knew it's just gonna be kind of it's early spring bare bones colors today. So I have um, cad yellow medium here. And titanium white. I probably won't need too much of that today. Cad yellow light. Cad yellow medium. Um, yellow ochre. Burnt sienna. Ultramarine blue. I have a little phthalo blue. I'm using that a little bit more and more these days. Um, phthalo green and alizarin permanent. Okay, and that pretty much covers the essentials of what I bring with on um, in my plein air backpack. And so, um, oh, as well as my little sketchbook. Um, and I keep these small, really small. Uh, you can bring, uh, if you feel inclined to bring a little larger one to actually make some fully realized drawings, that's a really good idea to, uh, too. I bring my watercolors in a small little kit as well, just because sometimes I don't want to drag everything out and I just want to do a little sketch in the morning with my coffee, whatever. And that's a nice thing too. So um, I bring my watercolor or my little um, sketchbook and I start out my sketches, got my pencil over here, and I'm ready to jump in. Now, another thing you want to do when you get to your site, and you have your things pretty much set up, um, I, I try to get my head in the game as soon as possible, and I look around carefully and really just try to analyze what what about this is moving me? What about this scene do I love? Do I love this this scene with the way this, the light, the blue light is hitting the water? Do I like the green of the water? Do I like the way the light's hitting the cliff? Like, I like that right there behind me and how the light's hitting that. It just drips down like gold, and the shadow creeps up. I like that too. I like that shadow and the golden light on the water, but I like some of the colors and lights that I see playing on the water down below me too. So before I go in, I take some time to just, just really soak it in and decide, because that's where your painting is started and finished in those moments when you make that decision, because then you can kind of visualize the canvas and you know exactly what it is you want to say. And then you have to keep that vision in your head. That's, that's the main secret to plein air painting. Keep that right there, that picture that you see. Because um, when you lose that, you've lost your vision. It's just like in life. So hold on to the beauty that you see in the first place. All right, you guys, so that's it. And um, please, uh, if you have any questions, please put them below, um, as well as the links for all of these things will be down below as well. Uh, and I hope to see you at one of my upcoming workshops. They're always a blast and we always, we all learn a lot. I get just as much from the people who attend and all of you wonderful people out there. Um, it, it, I feed off of a bit as well as everyone else. So it's a wonderful time for everybody. And um, so anyway, thank you guys.